There is no happy ending. There is no light at the end of the tunnel. I'm sorry I can't give you nothing more than this blessing. Maybe one day you'll forgive me. The Prison Fortress of Fenriel. A knock rings out against the metal door of a cell. Prisoner 1612, your meal. Are you still alive in there? I said it's meal time. Yeah, I heard you. If you wish to survive, I would suggest you cooperate. Lord Lucius doesn't care if you attempt a hunger strike. You will die either way, by starvation or his execution blade. Doesn't matter then. Try to keep his strength up. Kuh. What do you care? Eat, riot. Fine. The meal provided by the guard was only that of gruel. A sickeningly bitter slop that Riot swore he could smell in the air. It disgusted him, but he ate regardless. The god was right. Whether he ate or not, he would not receive a different fate. If he kept his strength up, struck when the opportunity presented itself, maybe he could escape. He nearly wept at the thought. There is no use entertaining the idea. There is no escaping this hell. This prison will be my grave. Riot lamented the thought, and to some extent he understood it. He understood why he was there. He understood the severity of his actions. And yet, he looked at his sword head and felt nothing. No regret, no fear, just numbness. Perhaps the stealing of his resolve was what his father had prepared him for. <sighs> Ironic. After he had stomached all he could, he put a tray out through the slot in the door. On the first day he had been brought in, he had considered peering through the slot and attempting to reconnaissance. It was futile. The fortress was nothing but grey stone walls and grey stone floors, nothing remarkable aside from the open air cells. Riot was not afforded such a luxury. His crime was too severe to allow that sort of freedom. Instead, he was stuck in a cell, warded off on all sides, no windows, no light. Just his misery to keep him company. Think, damn it. Think! There had to be a way out. He couldn't die here. If he could get his hands on a sword, an axe, any kind of blade, he could fight his way out. All he could do now was bide his time. A pathetic way to die. Lord Lucis, the executioner, was not one to let his prey simply escape. No, it would be a fight to the death if he could even manage to get to it. But Riot was exhausted, worn down from the inhumane conditions of the prison for the days, perhaps weeks that he had already endured. If he was going to survive, he needed all the strength he could manage. All things logistically speaking, he would never escape, but he had to try. If nothing else, he needed to know if what he saw that night was real. In the dark of night, in the corner of his cell, he still saw that figure, clear as day, black as night. He saw that figure with wings spanning the length of walls. Maybe what the guard had told him when he was first taken in was true, that solitary confinement would change him, taint him. Maybe he had been tainted the entire time, and this only served as a catalyst to corrupt him further. He put his hands together, pressed firmly to his forehead. My angel, Abaddon. Watch over my wretched soul. His prayers echoed in the empty room. It wouldn't be long before the guards arrived. What a miserable last existence. He refused to accept that this was the end. There was no way. And yet, when the guards arrived to pull him out of his lanky chains, he barely made a peep. Seems like solitary confinement made you docile. Shame. Lucy's likes it when his meal fights back. Riot grinned and bared his fangs, not in excitement, but rather to show he had no intention of lying down and taking it. The one guard jabbed at him in the back to keep walking, and so he did. One foot in the other, he marched towards his death. The state of the fortress was bleak, horrific. Dead bodies lined the cells, and chains lined the dead bodies. There was no way they weren't starved to death like the guard had mentioned. Maybe that guard was looking out for Riot. If he ever saw the poor soul, 
You may even thank them. Stop stalling, prisoner! The guard yanked his chains forward, and Riot nearly bit the bastard on instinct. It didn't matter. They had arrived. Behind the door was Lord Lucy's. The guard opened the door, unlocked the riot's cuffs, and threw him into the room. Good luck. Wait a minute. Oh, you've got to be joking. They closed the door quickly behind themselves. Riot was locked within the lion's den. I assure you, they're not joking, prisoner. So maybe I should refer you by name. Riot Felmer. You should consider it an honor for me to even address you, you vile wretch. You. You're Lucy's then, I take it. That's Lord Lucy's to you, Thurman. So what? You plan on executing me? No trial, no jury, just straight to it? Talk about blind justice. And what do you know of justice, murderer? Ryan looked around desperately, trying to find any weapon with which to fend off Lucy's quick advances. Answer me, rat. That's Riot to you. Where do you get the confidence from? Lucy scowled at him for the comment and readied his weapon, a bladed whip. Ryan looked around, desperately trying to find something to use in defense. Why don't you use your body? <laughs> As he scrambled to find something to use, Lucy slashed out, whipping it with deadly precision. The blade slashed his hand, blood spilling as it connected. Yeah! It burned. The sensation of metal ripping through flesh was horrendous, and Riot knelt over in pain. Like a wounded animal, you look at me with such fire in your eyes. It'll be a shame when I have to drain your life like all the rest. Nothing more than a criminal ripe with sin to be plucked from your filthy vessel. A fantastic addition to my tainted lifeblood. Tainted lifeblood? The taste of the gruel permeated in the back of his throat, followed by bile. You manufacture lifeblood? You're out of criminals? Are you out of your goddamn mind, Lucy's? That's Lord Lucy, swine! Not a lash. This one, Riot barely dodged. He could feel the blood dripple down his hand and clenched it tightly. A sword. He needed a sword. If he had a blade, something, anything, he could fight back. Think, damn it, think! I don't need to take this treatment from a damn low-life murderer. I'll kill you here and now! He wound up another crack of the whip. Riot's eyes widened, blood rushing to his ears. He clenched his teeth, bracing for impact. Abaddon, please, don't let me die like this, please! On instinct, he raised his hands as if he would somehow be able to stop the blow. No doubt his arms would be ripped to shreds. What a way to go. He closed his eyes and anticipated his fate. But nothing came. The still blade ripped into his flesh. He heard the echo of metal scraping against metal. He could feel a sudden weight in his hands. What in the hell? Riot peeked his eyes open, and in his hands he found a sword, a beautiful blade, dark red, polished to a reflective finish, a blade made of his own blood. You have a blessing? Riot grinned wide and tore his weapon downwards, striking Lucy's blade whip to the side. I don't understand. Why would someone the likes of you possess a blessing? That makes no sense. The angels must be bored, or worse. They must have been conspiring with you to kill him! Wait, who? Kill who? Wouldn't you like to know? Riot readied his sword for the moment. The grip felt natural in its grip, and the weight of it was durable, yet lightweight. It would do nicely. Blessing or not, I will not fail the saint! Lucy's will not back down. Hey, yo! Ah! Uh, attack! Riot attacks Lucy for 19 damage. Lucy is ready for their attack. Wait, parry! Lucy is managed just to land a hit. Ah! Attacks Riot for 54 poison damage. Are you serious? I attack again! That's barely doing anything. Lucy is ready for their attack. Parry! 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 Successful parry. Lucy is attacks Riot for 0 damage. Okay, skill. Huh, strikes without hesitation. Calculates damage based on resistance. Cooldowns returns. 
bites and tear absorbs enemy HP. Wrath! Right attacks Lucy's for 19 damage. Absorbs 50 hit points. Okay, uh, parry, 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 parry. Successful parry. All right, nice. Any other skills I could try? What does misery do? Uh, your misery makes you stronger. Less HP, attack, defense, and resist stuns. Uh, blood oath, I guess. Here we go. All right, 22 magic damage. Lucy's ready is their attack. Uh, parry, 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 parry. Successful parry. Lucy's attacks right for zero poison damage. God damn, I'm a parry god. God damn. I guess we'll skip ahead to like when we actually kill Lucy's. Lucy's has been defeated. The fight was hard, but well won. For your struggles, you are rewarded strength. Oh. Ah. Uh, huh. I love getting more attack damage. Uh, maybe more resistance, a bit more defense, uh, some hit points, and more damage. Yeah, I guess we'll go with this. Yeah, sure. Four hit points, three attack points, two defense points, one resistance. Ah! How dare you! You vermin! You filth! Admit it, Lucy's. You're done. Lucy's cried out, frustrated at both himself and Riot's triumphant taunting. Don't think you've won. All I need is to recover my strength. I'll have you killed. There's nowhere for you to run. Think again, Lucy's. Who? The two of them focus so hard on each other, they fail to notice the door to the execution hall has been opened, and a figure had walked through. Huh? Who are you? What are you doing in my execution chamber? I should have you executed as well for daring to enter my sacred domain. If you lay a hand on me, you will face the wrath of the king. Riot looked fervently between the woman who walked in and Lucy's, who looked like he was about to boil over. The woman held up a sword, not just any sword, it was a sword that bore the royal sigil. She was legitimate in a business. The king? I'm here on orders of the king. I'm to retrieve one Riot Felmer, convicted murderer. She looked Riot dead in the eyes. It seems I've arrived just in time. Athenor, if you would. Uh, who are these sassy children? Behind the woman, a girl emerged, but not just any girl, a lifeblood maiden. A proper one. She was so young. Riot couldn't help but shudder at the implications. Please, accept this vial as an offering. The maiden handed Riot a vial containing pure, bright blue lifeblood. It was the real deal, and judging by the fresh bandage on her hand, it was fresh. Horrific. He wouldn't dare to deny her sacrifice, though, and accepted it with earnest. What a nuisance. Whatever. If the king wants to torture him for information, then be my guest. When the time comes to sever his head from his neck, you know where I am. Noted, if it comes to that, I'll grant you the honor. Riot looked at the woman with uncertain side eye. Just who was she to have such authority? Come, we're leaving. Riot hesitated. Or would you prefer being put down like a dog? No, absolutely not. Ugh, I'm coming with. Don't even think I wouldn't. Good boy. Let's go, Ethanor. The girl nodded before trotting down to follow after the woman. She was already heading down the hall and Riot struggled to keep up. The last thing he had seen of the execution hall before running off with Sluicy's kicking a pile of bones to pieces. How horrid. Walking out of the fortress was nothing more than a few scratches felt privilege. Even though he wanted nothing more than to escape this wretched hellhole. It felt inappropriate that he didn't have to rip and tear his way through the guard staff. Like Doom Guy? You want to be Doom Guy? And yet, they made it outside. It was cold. So cold. The frigid air against Riot's face, and he saw his two companions shiver against the breeze. Do I at least get to know your name? The woman looked at him with a steely gaze and let out a heavy sigh. My name is Cassandra, and this... Is Athenor. The young lifeblood maiden gave a soft bow of her head. Cassandra, huh? And where do you plan on taking me? You said the king wanted me, but for what? She continued walking onwards, and Riot struggled to keep up. What? Am I not allowed to know where we're heading? I never said I was taking you to the king. Huh? 
Are we returning home, Cass? Yes. So what? You randomly come to rescue me. Not saying I don't appreciate it. Don't get me wrong. But what for? Why would you? Cassandra refused to turn to look at him. But he pushed his way forward to get a look at her face. A look in her eyes. It looked like a reflection of his own desperation as he was being taken away by the church guard. I need your help. It's something only you can do. You're going to tell him already. I thought you said you were going to wait. If I don't, he might run. As much as I like to physically put a leash on him, that's unbecoming of one such as myself. I'm listening, you know. Right. What could you possibly need help with that you would turn to a rotten man like me? I've worked for you. Work that only a rotten man like yourself can do. Just who are you? Cassandra didn't look at him. Instead, turned her attention north. We can't talk here. Let's head to the cathedral, and I'll answer your questions there. <sighs> Fine. Come along, Ethanor. She gave Riot a snide look. Come along, dog. Hey! Fine. Whatever. Might as well. Not like I have anything better to do. The cathedral on the edge of town. How much further is this place? And why do I feel like I'm being led into a trap? It's not much further. Quit your whining. Lady Cassandra, I sent something on the edge of my perimeter. A monster? I can take care of it. No, not a monster. The signature is... It's hard to describe. I believe it may be a lord. A lord? Could it be her, do you think? I'm not sure. Riot looked between the two of them. Frustrated and being excluded, but ultimately said nothing. If he bided his time, surely they would explain something, wouldn't they? You, dog. My name is Riot, you know. Does, is anyone ever going to call me by my name? I'm aware. I prefer to call you by your title, though. He grumbled, but didn't fight it. I watch you scout ahead. Follow along in this direction. As the North says, she senses something troubling. And if she's right, it would be best to send someone more apt with handling it. Why me? Aren't you some high and mighty member of the King's Guard or something? You held your own against Lord Lucy's. It's only right you would be able to hold your own against another lord. Duh. Fine, whatever. Cassandra smiled at his unwilling cooperation, and he sets off in the direction dictated. Lousy, good-for-nothing, slave-driving woman. I should just run. Go where? Surely there's wanted posters for me in town. There's no way people wouldn't recognize me. My distinct style will make it impossible to hide with any efficiency. Brash thinking has put me between the blade and a hard place, huh? As he continued walking, he heard the unmistakable sound of a lone footstep ahead. Once foolishly optimistic, he now realized just how much danger he had walked into. There was no doubt someone laying in wait for them. If this threat were as dangerous and bloodthirsty as Lucy's, it was bound for a world of hurt. Riot carefully peered through the trees, and to his surprise, he saw the figure of Ease. A lone figure cloaked in a cowl similar to his own, standing in the clearing as if waiting for his approach. Behind the figure, a daunting cathedral, backlit by the ever-present red moon. The building must have been where Cassandra and Athenor had been heading towards. There was no doubt about it. And whoever this figure was, they were waiting for them. Riot would have to take them down, fast. You can come out. Ah! It was a man's voice, and he had already spotted Riot. Granted, his outfit wasn't ideal for stealth, but under the dark of night, he wasn't expecting that so fast. What do you want with this cathedral? The cathedral? Oh, you're mistaken. I'm not here for any of that. Riot swore he only blinked that the man had closed any distance between them. He was now mere inches away. I'm here for you. Damn it! I knew there would be a bounty on my head, but this is ridiculous! Ryan moved to draw his sword, but found that his cuts had closed. There was no way he was going to be able to draw anything like that. It didn't matter. The man had gripped his wrist firmly. Try as he might to pull away, he couldn't. His grip was strong. I don't want to fight. Quite the opposite. I'm here to help you, Ryan Falna. Ryan felt his stomach drop. How do you know who I am? And you're probably the first person to call me by my name. Who are you? You can call me Festa, Lord of Blood. He did release his grip on Riot. If anything, he tightened it. It hurt. 
I'm here to offer you something in exchange for your help. You didn't answer my question. How do you know my name? Or rather, how do you know if I am this alleged Ryan Felmer? I mean, it couldn't possibly be me, like, not with this distinctive lavish coat. The mask Fester wore tilted upright just a smidge, and Ryan could see part of an eye pierce into his soul. There was no need to ask how he knew. The question had now shifted to why instead. Fester's grip began to feel hot, quickly climbing to a burning sensation. Just what was he doing? Raya tried to pull away once more, but stopped, seeing there was now a deep red glow emanating off of Fester's hand. What are you doing? Blood magic. The lifeblood maidens aren't the only ones who can commune with the lifeblood. I am also omniscient in that sense. I saw the way you took down Lucy's. I saw the way you utilized your blessing to create a blade. With this imbuing, you should be able to summon that blade with ease. Think of it as an investment. Ryan grit his teeth as the spell dispersed, his body feeling even heavier than before with exhaustion. It, it hurts. Sorry, it'll just take another moment. True to his word, Fester was finished shortly. In Ryan's mind, it felt like an eternity, but that was the pain talking more than anything else. Why? Why would you do this? Why me? I don't really care enough to fret the details for now, but to make a long story short, I have a laundry and list of chores that only someone like you can accomplish. First, Cassandra needing me for stuff she would tell me about, now you. Am I just a toy to the lot of you? <laughs> Perhaps. Ah, screw off. If you're not going to tell me, I'm heading back to tell them the coast is clear. She brought the maiden with, did she? This is a bold move on her part. Why is that? The lifeblood maidens possess a ward to keep monsters at bay. Taking her from her domain removes that ward. Make sure you check every room for monsters. Ryan wasn't sure what to believe. He knew the maidens were different, but didn't know how or why. It made sense, but at the same time, pisses him off. Oh, piss off. Just try to scare me. <laughs> Maybe I am. Riot. Riot, are you okay? Cassandra called out to him from several yards away. He called back. Yeah, I'm over here. Just as he was about to tell Fester to scram, he noticed the man had already disappeared into nothingness. Equally convenient as it was unnerving. Thank God. Ethanor said she felt one of the signatures disappear, but couldn't tell which one it was. I got worried you were killed. Ethanor looked at Riot, then off in the distance in the direction Fester must have headed towards. There was some weird guy here. Said his name was Fester, Lord of Blood. Fester. She looked at Ethanor, both of them equally confused. I don't know. I didn't see his face since he had this creepy bird mask on, but he caught some blood magic spell on me and screwed off. Blood magic. That's... Huh. I uh, wouldn't believe me either. Don't worry. But I swear that's what happened. No, I believe you. It's just odd for a lord to be gifted in magic. It's not unheard of, though. Typically, the only ones who can control blood magic are his maidens. Perhaps he is descended from one. Maybe. I don't know. I'm exhausted, though. What's inside? In the back of his head, Riot replayed Fester's concern of checking each room. Paranoid nonsense. They entered the cathedral with the use of Cassandra's key. Welcome in. Wipe your feet at the door. What is this place anyway? It doesn't seem like it's in use. At least not from the outside. This is our home. Ryan looked around, assessing just how old the place seemed to be. Ethanol walked along the halls, lighting each torch candle with the blue flame from her ward. We escaped here after the plague swept through Duskridge, and we've been here ever since. I believe it was originally home to a group of missionaries. Unfortunately, they are all long dead. Is that so? The place looked familiar, but perhaps that was old memories playing tricks on him. You're free to pick any room. At the altar there is where I offer lifeblood. Please take what you need. Thanks. Riot nodded to Ethanor and turned his attention towards Cassandra. I'll probably retire for the night if that's okay. I haven't slept on a proper bed in I don't know how long. We can talk everything through the morning. Get some sleep, Riot. 
And I think that's the first time he called me by my name. Finally, another person called me by my name! Cassandra let out a tired laugh and nodded absently. Don't have the energy to be snarky. I'm sure you're exhausted as well, aren't you, Ethanor? I am, but I must finish lighting the ward lights before I go to sleep. Yes, of course. Raya cracked his neck and let out a heavy yawn. Which way to the rooms? Cassandra pointed towards one of the side hallways. Sleeping quarters are that way, and two rooms at the end of the hall are mine and Ethanor's. Before she had even finished, he was walking off. Sleep sounded so nice, he could barely keep his eyes open. Noted. See you in the morning. Good night. Riot chose the first room he found to be a bedroom. It didn't take long to shimmy out of his outerwear and nestle into bed. Being in a genuine bed felt incredible. His tired, abused body welcomed it so happily he nearly wept. What an incredible feeling. He pressed his face into a soft pillow and could barely let out a consent head sigh before sleep overtook him. Cassandra, is this really a good idea? We don't know what he's capable of. What other choice do I have? If we're to make any difference in this rotten world, then we must fight tooth and nail. You should understand that more than anyone. I do, but I worry. I'll keep you safe, Ethanor, just as I always have. I believe in you, Cass. Now come on, let's head to bed. Okay. Anyway, that was Lordless. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you guys want to play this game for yourself, link to the game will be in the description below. Um, I might be back for part two of this once uh, an update has been released. It's got a fairly promising premise, and I'm actually looking forward to see like how the story progresses from here. But anyway, hope you guys have a lovely rest of the day. And as always, I'll be seeing you in the next video. This is Lion, signing off. Ciao.